Minister, thank you very much for joining us at Asia House. Mm -hmm. I start firstly with the G20 finance ministers meeting. What was mm -hmm. the mood? Well, this is an unusual time for the G20 meeting, uh, especially after the U.S. election, so the first attendance of the U.S. Treasury. Uh, there is a question about uh, whether the commitment of the globalization and uh, policy coordination, which is based on a global rule, is going to be respected. There's quite a dynamism of the discussion because I think the United States is still formulating what they really want and what kind of uh, policy, especially in trade, which is very, very uh, important for them in their political rhetoric, but also important for the global world. Uh, there is a quite a pressure for, uh, as a group that the United States need to uh, be actually cooperated with others. Uh, and uh, the response is still not yet clear in this case. So there is still uncertainty on that. There is also uh, a communication which is already being agreed in the past, for example, like uh, climate change has not been uh, allowed to be communicated at this moment. So the world is really facing a, a, an uncertainty at this moment. And the G20 as a group try to minimize from the perception that there is no really communication among policymakers. But I must admit that this is really among the, the little bit depressing from point of view of the policy commitment from the finance minister and central bank governor of the G20s. Let's move to Indonesia now. And the positive there is, is that the, the outlook there is, is positive. Mm -hmm. Growth forecasts of five, five mm -hmm. and a bit percent. Are you confident you'll achieve that, that forecast? And indeed, is there a, a, an opportunity to exceed it? Well, the last year is end with 5.06, and this year on our budget forecast is 5.1. If you look at the composition of growth, we are more positive because the external dragging forces in the past, like export, has been leveling off. In the past three years, it's always a negative in dragging down the growth. Now it's slightly above zero, but no longer negative, which is, I think, is a good momentum for us to maintain. Uh, other source of gross consumption is quite robust, and uh, the investment. Uh, the government will continue reforming and inviting uh, both the foreign as well as our own internal domestic investment uh, in order for them to be able to continue supporting growth. I think we are very optimistic that 5.1% will be achieved this year. The tax amnesty, which has been universally praised as having been successful, mm -hmm. ends at the end of this month. What's mm -hmm. next on the reform agenda? We already achieved uh, quite remarkable in terms of the uh, amount of asset disclosed, uh, more than 336 billion, uh, as well as the repatriation, which is more than 11 billion of the asset. And then the collection uh, redemption fee is 8.6 billion. So uh, it's not only about the amount of money, but also the data behind those which is actually providing us that the tax base in Indonesia can still be expanded. Of course, we have to do, really do it. It will end this March. We, we are not going to extend. We will now deepening and uh, 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 creating more reform momentum within the Ministry of Finance or Director General of Taxation that will improve on our uh, information technology, business process, capacity of the human capital uh, in order for them to be able to actually uh, manage and capitalize what we've already achieved from the tax uh, amnesty. But this is going to be a continued improvement for our own performance. And then we are going to use the international cooperation. Like in the G20, the good uh, result of this G20 today is the agreement on a tax cooperation, international tax taxation. That's including the uh, preventing base erosion for a one country to actually be eroded by other jurisdiction as well as the automatic exchange of information in which then all jurisdictions will be cooperated in providing uh, the information and that, that will uh, closing the loophole for the tax avoidance to happen. And finally, infrastructure. There's a huge need for infrastructure spending Correct. right across emerging markets, mm -hmm. but Indonesia has, has a particular need. How are you going to accelerate infrastructure building, infrastructure spend? But first, the government is going to use our own instrument first because I think whether this is related to the financing, so we've already have quite a lot of innovation. The amount of the budget allocation for the infrastructure spending has been increased uh, triples, more than triples in the past three years. We also increase uh, the amount of money to land acquisition because land it was the the one of the obstacle for this 
the implementation of the infrastructure project. We also innovate quite a lot of instrument and the policy to cover the risk so that we can attract more private sector to participate in this infrastructure development. So within the Ministry of Finance, we have so many project preparation uh, uh, fund, there is a viability gap fund, the certainty of payment fund, so that making sure that the, if private sector would like to participate in Indonesia, then they are going to be able to like, see the risks in a much more objective way, then they can then assess where they can uh, 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 participate. We also use the state-owned enterprise in an area which is really difficult, especially when the financial uh, rate of return is low, but the economic rate of return is very high. So that is just justified for uh, uh, government as well as the state-owned enterprise to step up in this area. So a lot of uh, policy, huge infrastructure gap in Indonesia. We need 5,000 trillion. The government can only provide it one uh, quarter of that. So the three quarter is definitely coming from the private. Sri Mulyani, thank you very much for joining us at Asia House. Thank you.